What's going on? My name is Coach Jordan, and I'm going to tell you five undeniable ways to make sure everything you practice translates into a real basketball game. Stick around for number five because it's something no one ever really talks about. Only Kobe has really talked about this that I know. So, number one. Always be intense and focused. You take a look, Chris Rock sitting right next to Kobe Bryant, shooting the breeze, funniest man in the world, telling jokes, and take a look at Kobe Bryant. I don't even hear you. All right, so no matter if you're going through a drill, if you're just running, if you're doing push-ups, if you're working on your layups, always be 100% focused and in that mindset because in the game, you're going to have to be 100% focused or everything you do is not really going to go that well. Um, so my advice is just stay in that mode and just, if you, if you don't know how figure out how to just concentrate, like if you're doing form shooting, say it's focus on making like five in a row, that'll increase your focus when you have to do streaks or like see how many you can make in a minute. Those type of things are the things that increase your focus. So try to play like different games and stuff like that with yourself. So you have to focus to win. All right. All right number two, only play against people that are going to play for real that are not bullshitting, right? So like if you're playing one-on-one, if you're playing 21, if you're playing five-on-five, two-on-two, half-court, whatever it is that you're doing, even if it's a shooting game against someone else, you have to do it against someone that's going to be 100% because then that's going to force you to be 100% or you're just going to get blown out, right? And so if you're at the gym and you're playing open gym and the game's not really for real, I would just go work on my game like don't even play in that game right if no one's going to play for real because it's not good for you um but even if you in that scenario find the one person that's going to play for real it might only be you two playing for real within that whole set of five on five but make sure you're one of those people playing against that other person you know um you just have to get used to playing people that are going to go 100 percent. like that's the only way that it's going to translate to the game Right. Because in the game, people are going to go 100 percent. So you have to emulate that in other competitions that you do. And I think that's really beneficial. I know that's really beneficial. Number three, build your confidence by practicing a lot and playing games and also doing affirmations. I don't think anyone talks about affirmations. All right. And I talked about the games earlier, like uh, when you're doing like the make th- make five threes in a minute or whatever it is, like stuff like that, because when you can beat those type of games, you know what I'm saying? Like. Um, those things will help you gain confidence knowing that you can win certain things, right? And so if you're like, okay, let's see if I can make 10 free throws in a row. Like if you can do that, then your confidence goes up. You know, if you can do, um, like if you ever played Beat the Pro, um, I'll talk about that game at the end, um, what Beat the Pro is. Actually, I'll just tell you right now. Um, Beat the Pro is like you do a shooting game and you go, let's say you go five spots around, you're going down and back, right? Um, you're going like like corner wing top of the key wing corner and then back around every sh- you go to 21 right and the pro is imaginary like we used to call it beat jj reddick or beat steph curry or beat clay thompson or beat ray allen whoever you want to call it um and the game is you go to 21 every shot you make you get one point but every shot you miss the imaginary pro gets two points right and so then you play to 21 so let's say you miss um, if you miss, you know, 11 shots and the pro has 22, that's game. But you got to make 21 shots before you miss 11 so you can win that. And then once you get good enough, then it's like one to three. So then if you miss, the pro gets three. And I played it to a point um, when I was in high school. I would go to like I ended up playing with it at five because I had got so good at shooting. Like me and my coach would do that and he would rebound for me and I'd play and I'd go one to five. And I'd have to try to beat that, you know, because I could beat it on three pretty easily. At, I got to a certain point with that. So. Like, little stuff like that. And then as far as affirmations go, like, you have to tell yourself um, things that you want to be true. So there was an experiment where the these, I don't know what it was, like a class or something, they had two different plants. And one of the plants, they would say, like, bad things to it. And then they had another plant where they would only say good things to it, like really talking to the plant, right? And after a time, the one they were saying bad things to started to die and, like, wither and the other one was like good and it was green and it was alive and it was like flourishing and stuff like that. And so the same thing works with people. Like if it, if enough people are telling you that you suck, you're going to start to believe it. And then you start to like, like feel bad about yourself. You know what I mean? And if enough people are telling you you're good, like you start to get hyped up and you're like, okay, maybe I am good. And you can do that to yourself. And so what I would say is like, if you don't have confidence in certain areas, write down 
like write down what you don't have confidence in. So be like, okay, I'm not confident in my shot or even in just regular life, right? You'd be like, I don't look good, right? Or whatever it is, I'm not good enough to do this. And then write the opposite, but with it in a present tense. So like say, I am good at basketball. I am a good shooter. I look good, whatever it is you want to be. And if you say that more and more every day, then it's going to become true. You're going to believe it in your mind. And so whatever you believe in your mind is true, right? It's just perspective. So that helps a lot. I used to do that unknowingly. I don't even know how I learned that. It was just like random, but it worked a lot for me. I had like irrational confidence. (laughs) Number four, all right, have the courage to deal with the consequences of taking risk in games. So what I mean is like, you know that your coach is going to get mad at certain things. Have the honor shooting the technicals. Look at here, look at here. But have the guts to try it anyway. You know what I mean? Like, the, you have to get to that level to where a coach can't sway how you play your game. You know, if they don't like it, then leave, you know, if you can. Um, but it sucks having to box yourself in, thinking you could have done so much more just because a coach said whatever they said. You know, I'd rather you go out swinging and playing your game. You know what I'm saying? That's what... That's what I tried my best to do. And sometimes I didn't. Like, sometimes I was fearful of messing up. But then at the end of the day, like, I, I built up enough courage b- because I did those affirmations and stuff. Like, that stuff gave me courage to do what I know I could do because I've seen myself do it before and I believed it. So, like, I had the courage to know, okay, if I shoot this fadeaway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and it goes bad, I might have some consequences to deal with, you know, and I was okay dealing with those. So just be okay dealing with the consequences of taking risk because a lot of coaches are, they're not risk takers. They don't let you take risk. And so um, it's very hard to build that up. But I think having the right people around you, believe in yourself, um, you know, if your teammates believe you can do it, it! then it's okay no matter what the coach says. And number five, all right. Use your imagination when you practice. Imagination. All right. So if you can't always play a one-on-one game or whatever it is in a a real game, literally in your mind, imagine that you're playing in a game, right? Everything you do, because you don't really have to practice with cones or like dummies and all that stuff. I really never usually did 95% of the time. Um, And what you can do is like, literally just imagine that someone is guarding you imagination and reacting how they would when you're doing a move so like when you go to the right and do a layup pretend that someone's close to you contesting it like this close and so you're working on contested layups in your imagination the way it works is if it if it's strong enough it makes it feel real so you have to actually feel like there's somebody on you when you're doing shots or whatever it is. I always felt in my mind when I was practicing shooting by myself, I I would practice as if someone was contesting my shot. So I I would do a couple of dribble moves and like, it would feel like it literally feel like someone was in front of me. So I'd shoot it, you know? And I think that helps a lot when you don't have those other people to play one-on-one. If you're just at the park by yourself or the gym by yourself, whatever, whatever it is. Imagination. All right, fine. Imagination will take you a long time ways so um that's my five leave a comment below of the one you think you found the most helpful and that you're going to use and also um subscribe if you want to see me answer more questions like this there's going to be a lot more coming i got this if you want to see this two pages front and back filled with questions this was just one so um yeah hope that helps follow me on whatever you want to follow me on it'll be in the comments and i'll see you tomorrow i guess